This is day five of a six part series on eating six unique meals for only $2.50 a day. The rules are simple. For this week, I can only consume food that I bought at the beginning of the week for $15, though I am allowing myself reasonable amounts of spices. I am releasing a video every day for these six days, so stay tuned and enjoy. If you saw the previous video, the first meal of this day is the same. Two slices of the sandwich bread from day three, spread with a tablespoon of butter, and lightly toasted. Still excellent by the standards of the week. As for the main dish, I decided to make scrambled egg sandwiches with American fries on the side. The longest item to cook is the fries, so we will start with them. Here I have 750 grams of potatoes washed. Now these potatoes were starting to sprout, so I had to go in with my knife and surgically remove the sprouted bits. I think my kitchen might be a little too warm, because it seems that no matter what I do, my potatoes always sprout within a couple of days of bringing them home. Regardless, after removing the sprouts, I cut these into roughly half-inch cubes and deposited them into my trusty sauce pot. I then covered them with about an inch of tap water and set them on the stovetop on high. I then reduced to a simmer, letting these go for a few minutes, until the cubes were about half done, which is hard to qualitatively express, but essentially they should still have a little bite to them when chewed. While these were going, I got the eggs for my sandwiches ready. For this meal, I'm going to use five of my eggs, cracked into a large bowl. Yes, I am putting the eggshells back in the carton, I throw them out before I put them back in the fridge. Apparently this is a weird thing to do. Regardless, once cracked, I scrambled the eggs using a fork and set them aside for a moment while I prepared my toast. Taking the now about half used loaf, I removed two more slices and buttered them with a tablespoon and a half of butter. Back at the stove, the potatoes are ready to go. I just removed them from the heat and drained them into the sink. In the place of the sauce pot, I set a large nonstick skillet with a tablespoon and a half of butter. Once that was melted and sizzling, I poured in my potatoes and gave them a shake to get them as even as possible. To this I added a shake of garlic powder, a few cranks of black pepper, and of course, a few pinches of salt. While that was going, I took another nonstick skillet and placed it on the other burner with a tablespoon of butter. I set that on medium heat and began melting the butter. In the meantime, I kept tossing the potatoes every minute or so, trying to build some color on them. You will see in the end I wasn't entirely successful at this. Once the butter in the second skillet was bubbling, I went ahead and poured in the scrambled eggs. Then, constantly stirring, cooked the eggs over the next two minutes. I pulled these off the heat when they were still a little runny. Normally, I would let them go a bit longer, but on an open-faced sandwich, I find the softer texture holds together a bit better. I timed this with the toaster oven so that the eggs would finish with the toasted bread. With that, we are ready to plate up. To the plate, I added the toast and the American fries. As you can see, I got some color on the potatoes, but not as much as I would have liked. Onto the toast, I deposited the scrambled eggs, and over them I added salt and pepper, and for a change and some contrast, some dried parsley flakes. I started with the American fries. Even with the lack of a crispy exterior, these were really good. Perfectly cooked and seasoned, they were a great change of pace from the last few days. Could use some ketchup, though. Hey, that gives me an idea. As for the egg sandwiches, they were amazing. I don't know if I was just protein deprived from the last few days, but these absolutely hit the spot. This whole meal went down really easily compared to the last few days. And as you can see from the calories and macros, it wasn't all that bad for me either. Almost 2200 calories is right in the sweet spot, and the protein is back up to acceptable though still suboptimal levels. We stayed below 250 as well, which is a plus. Overall, I'm completely pleased with how this day turned out. So far, this meal is probably a close second for me after that not gnocchi from day one. Anyway, hope to see you tomorrow for the conclusion to this crazy week. Thanks for watching.